I'm not even sure what are you guys are doing. Are you taking selfies of yourselves? Take, taking selfie. a selfie. Sorry. <laughs> okay. That's, in that case, take your time. <laughs> but when, <laughs> once you're ready, uh, we would. We're ready. Ready. I think it would be great if people could just hear. Give us two minutes about your show. How have you been doing? What made you stop? And why did you decide to set up your own studio? Why are we here today? Okay, so a little bit of backstory on us. Michelle and I met online, had what we like to call a whirlwind love affair that ended in heartbreak. Hers, of course. Um, <laughs> but we remained friends. Um, from our friendship, we decided that we had a lot of knowledge about online dating and dating, period. Uh, the two of us together have over 20 years of experience in dating. And we decided we would write a book about our experience and the experiences of others that we talked to. From the book, don't do what we did. Don't do what we did. Um, <laughs> we, started doing, uh, we started doing radio shows and things of, of that nature. But the, the main thing was to get the topic out, talk about relationships in all aspects, and try to help people from our experiences and try to help people not to do what we did. Right? Right. You've been recording. In, uh, in a real radio station that you have been paying rent for basically by the hour, right? Right, and that's exactly correct. It was really important for us once we decided to have a podcast that we really wanted it to be high quality and we wanted structure and we had a local station here that hosts podcasters and you right. pay a monthly fee to use the space so that you have quality. But we had quality, but we didn't have control. And that was a big thing for us in terms of being able to know what our numbers were because podcasting for us, taking our radio show to podcasting and iTunes, really was an endeavor and is an endeavor to help people but also to generate income. And right. so we were responsible for marketing, but we couldn't get our numbers. So it was very difficult to find out, well, how many listeners do we have? How many listeners at certain times? Because you were all on the account of the radio station, basically. Exactly. Right. So you, right. Right. you had no control. And unlike anybody else on this call, you, have, you were paying good money every week to sit in that studio. That's correct. Yes. That's yes. correct. And so for our one hour live show, it would go out live on the stream. Mm -hmm. But really, our listens came from replays on our podcast mm -hmm. right. through iTunes and Stitcher and, and you know all of the other outlets. So it made sense after talking with our amazing mentor, Moran, mm -hmm. and you know, working with you after the uh, expiration of our contract, we decided it made more sense economically without losing the quality, and we'd still have the control. And the right. control is really a big deal for us. Okay, so what I want to do now, if it's okay with everybody on the chat, and if you missed it, uh, Julie today is sitting right next to me, so if you have questions in the chat room, uh, Julie can tug my, uh, literally tug my shirt or hit my shoulder and um, ask me any questions that you guys have. So Julie is the master of the chat room today. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to quickly go through the basic setup we're going to do and how does everything connect together because a mixer is something. The center of today's installation is installing the mixer because that's where everything plugs into. And a mixer is something that looks very complicated and it has a lot of buttons, but it actually is quite simple once you get the basic uh, knobs and what everything does. So if everybody can see my screen, uh, I will get started. Because one thing that was important for Michelle and Ricardo, they needed a mixer because they have two people sitting in the same room. And you can do that with one microphone. It's possible. But it's not really the way it's done. And they, they, those two right here have been spoiled by doing this in a radio station with two microphones, with everything set up correctly, and there was no way they were going to just cram together in front of right. one microphone and try to make it work. But what do mixers actually do? There are many myths about it, and many of you guys have asked me several times in the Facebook group and uh, in emails, in one-on-one -on -one chat. People were asking, do, do mixer, will a mixer make me sound better? Should I get a mixer? When do I know if I need one? So let's answer that question first. So a mixer is basically one box 
that you plug all of your microphones and you plug in Skype and you plug all everything that has to do with your podcast, you plug into one box and it mixes all of the audio together. So you get Michelle and Ricardo. And if they're interviewing someone on Skype, you plug everybody into the mixer and it mixes them together to a final mix that is going to be the podcast episode. Uh, guys, is this making sense to you so far? I think we lost Michelle and Ricardo. I hope this makes sense because um, Michelle and Ricardo. <laughs> Guys, are you there? We are here. We're here. Okay. Uh, so I couldn't hear your response. Does this make sense to you so far? What a mixer does? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Perfect. So, do mixers really make you sound better? Well, to understand that, we kind of need to understand what a mixer really does, OK? So what does it take to record good sound? This will help us also understand how do we plug stuff. So when we record, when we want to get good sound, basically we need to talk into a high quality microphone. And then the microphone takes our, sound, uh, our talking, our sound waves, basically the air that we move when we speak, and turns that into an electrical signal. And that needs to get amplified, because it's a really, really weak signal. So that gets amplified. And the better quality, this amplifier, also often called the pre-amplifier, because it's before mixing, the higher quality the amplifier is, the better the sound will be. So then we have, basically, an electrical signal coming from the amplifier. And it goes into something that digitizes the sound. Basically, it converts everything that Michelle and Ricardo or you guys are saying into the microphone into a digital file, a WAV file, an AIFF file. It basically converts the real world into digital zeros and, and ones and bits. And that information goes to your recorder, which is usually your computer. So this is how you do good sound. Now, what happens when you don't have a mixer? When almost everybody on this call from Podcast Incubator has an ATR2100 microphone that they use in the USB mode, which means they plug the microphone directly into the computer. So you're talking into the microphone. As I said, the microphone needs an amplifier. And when you use the USB mode, the built-in amplifier, which is only OK-ish, if we're honest, the ATR is a good microphone, but the amplifier in there is not that great. And the OK-ish built-in amplifier sends, sends uh, what you're saying into the OK-ish digitizer that converts it into something your computer understands. And then that gets recorded by your computer, like Ecamm call recorder or Pamela or something like that. So why do mixers make it sound better? Because most mixers have built-in preamps or built-in amplifiers that just sound a lot better. So if you guys can see my screen, and perhaps if you can even see my mouse, hopefully. Or you can see where the arrow points. This knob right here is the controller of how much the amplifier, how much power is the amplifier adding. So what we have so far is if you don't have a mixer, you have an OK-ish okay amplifier and an OK-ish okay digitizer. The mixer has a good amplifier and a good digitizer which means that with a mixer, you will get better sound. But just to clarify, you can also buy a preamp if you are alone and have only one microphone. But as I said, for these two good-looking people that are setting up the studio today, since they have two microphones they want to manage and they want to have a Skype interview as well, they want something that can give them the most bang for their buck, as they mentioned originally. And that would be a mixer that can provide all of these together. Let's take a look at a mixer so we understand what are we going to plug today. This is the top of the mixer. And I'm going to go from left to right. The first section here, you can see three parts in the red rectangle. The first plug is a plug where you plug in your microphone into, and I don't know if you can see, but it says mic preamp. So this plugs the microphone into the mixer preamp. The second plug here is if you want to plug in a microphone without a preamp, which you will hardly ever do. And as I said previously, the third knob in the red rectangle, rectangle 
is the gain that controls how much amplification are we applying to the microphone. And this is where it starts getting easier with a mixer. Once you understand the three things that you're looking at right here in the rectangle, microphone input with amplification, without amplification, and the knob controlling how much you amplify, you can see that there are three more of these lines, and they all have the exact same interface, exact same knob. And basically, the mixer that we're looking on on the screen, this is the one Michelle and Ricardo has, supports up to four microphones. You can plug in one, you can plug in two, you can plug in three or four microphones, and each one of them has its own input. So that's the microphone input section, and almost every mixer you would look at and every mixer you would buy will have something that looks almost identically like this. Some of them will have eight inputs. Some of them, like the one I use, which is a smaller Behringer mixer, will only have two inputs for microphone. But this is generally the microphone input area. Next, we have something that looks a bit similar, and it's called line in. And this allows you to plug in input, sound input, that doesn't come from a microphone. For instance, Skype, right? If we want to have Michelle's audio coming from the microphone and Ricardo's audio coming from his microphone, and we want their interviewee audio coming also into the mix, he's not talking into a microphone with us. He's talking into his microphone over Skype. And that Skype has to come in as a line in. So right here, you see the plugs of the line in. And in this mixer, as you can see, again, you understand one plug, you understand all of them. You have four more line in options. So all in all, we have room for eight, uh, for eight inputs, four, four, four from microphones and four via line in. What we are actually going to be using today is two microphones and one line in from the computer. OK? Guys, are you still with me? Are we good? Yes. Perfect. Next, we have where this is another way to input stuff into a mixer, just so you understand what are you looking on. Almost every mixer will have an in channel that has another type of connector. This is not very interesting for today, but just so you know, you have another input track if you have this kind of connector. And then we have the output. First and foremost, the headphones. This is the plug where we will plug Michelle and Ricardo's headphones so they can hear themselves talking when they are recording, and they can hear the interviewee talking when they are recording. Next to the headphones, in this mixer, we have something called FX Send, and we'll get back to this later. Next to that, still on the output part of the, of the mixer, we have the main out. And this will be used if you're plugging the mixer, like in a concert or something, to real speakers. Or if you're doing that in an event, for instance, and you're speaking on stage, uh, you'll plug this main output into, uh, you'll plug the speakers into the main output. And you have the control room out is if you are in a radio station and you have a control room that wants to listen and eavesdrop on what you're saying, this is what you will use this output for. So basically, as I said, we are going to use on the on, on, on the leftmost side, the input one and two for the microphones of Michelle and Ricardo. We're going to use um, line in number five right here uh, for Skype. And we are actually going to use the USB output to record on the computer so we won't see it here. So that's basically the top of the mixer. Now, this is where people usually freak out. So now, right now, we are looking at the mixer from the top. And there are a lot of knobs here. Well, as Julie said once, looking at a mixer when you don't know what it does is kind of like um, stepping into our Star Wars or Star Trek or one of those movies. And there's these consoles with all these buttons that you don't know what they do. So here's, again, the good news about a mixer. Once you understand the buttons for one area, you get the buttons for everything. So this rectangle basically shows you, at the top, the input of the microphone. And then all the buttons in this rectangle all control how will that microphone sound. And then if I move one step to the left, you have the second microphone input. And all those blue and red and, and, and black and white buttons all control 
how the second microphone will sound. And the good news is you don't need to con configure most of them. And so on for microphone number three and uh, microphone number four. So if I zoom into these buttons, as I said again, all these buttons that you can see here, you can see the number one at the bottom. It basically says that all these buttons control microphone number one, and all these control number two, all these number three, all these control number four, and so on. So let's understand what are we looking on. The bottom button is probably the only one you will be playing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the bottom knob is the volume or the level knob, and that just determines how loud is this microphone going to come in to your final mix. Okay, now guys, have you been using in the radio the mixer or you had someone do that for you so far? We had a board mm -hmm. and we had an engineer while we would talk. Okay, so you are getting the engineering one on one. So basically, once we set up everything today, the only thing you'll need to play with is your volume, so Michelle's volume, Ricardo's volume, and the Skype volume if you have someone on Skype. So as I said, okay. the bottom knob is the volume level. Uh, did you say something, Ricardo? I didn't pick that up. No, I got you. I'm, I'm understanding. Okay. okay, perfect. Next one um, in, uh, going up is the panning knob, and that basically determines is this volume going to the left side, to the left ear, to the right ear, or as you will usually set it, just fully uh, centered. So this screenshot that you're seeing is... Um, you are not going to set the knobs as you see here. We will soon show you how to set it. You will set this to the center. Um, Julia, are we having issues in the chat? People want to know how much it costs. OK, people want to know how much it costs. So the Behringer mixer that you're looking on now costs $100, and it supports four microphones. There is a cheaper model that has uh, less channels, so less microphones, basically. You can have less people live on the show in the same room, and that costs, I believe, about $70. Any other questions? OK, so I'm going to carry on. Moving again upwards th through the knobs, these three buttons are the equalizer. They determine for this microphone how much bass are we going to hear, how much mid-range are we going to hear, and how much of the treble, of the high range, are we going to hear. To be quite honest with you, when you get started, again, you can set it all to fully to the zero level, to the center level, and just leave it as that to get started. And to be honest, I still record with my equalizer on absolute zero level, so everything is on the middle of the knob, and then I can change it later if I want to, but you don't need to bother with it. And last at the top is, and this is something special to this specific mixer, it has a built-in compressor. Now, if you were on the webinar a few weeks ago when we talked about applying dynamic compressor inside Audacity, well, this mixer actually can do the compression ahead of time, so you don't need to do that in Audacity. Okay, so that, and all of these basically just repeat themselves. You have the same volume and panning and equalizer for number one, number two, number three, number four, and on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't need to touch not the one on number one, not the one on number two, neither three nor four. Next, we have um, these inputs. Now, these are the inputs that don't come from a microphone. They come from a computer, like Skype. These don't need the same level of configuration. So as you can see here, if you look, it's, again, it's the same buttons, right, as the microphone has, but just you have less buttons. So this is channel five and six to 7, 8, so a stereo channel basically takes two numbers. So 5, 6 is going to be Skype input. 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, 12 is if you have more inputs coming in. Like if you have a telephone line that you want to allow people to call through, you will plug that there too. Are we good so far, guys? Yes. Okie doke. So moving on, last part of the mixer that you need to understand is um, this part on the right. And let's just walk through it very quickly. First here is the phantom button. And there's a very easy rule. If you have a condenser microphone plug, you probably need to push this button on. If you have an ATR2100 or any dynamic microphone, you need to make sure that button is not pushed on. Because if it will be pushed on, you will 
fry your microphone. So for you guys, today you are setting up a dynamic microphone. Do not turn that button on. On the right side to that button, you have the meter. And for you guys recording in Audacity, you know this meter. It's exactly the same like you have in Audacity. It shows you how loud are you speaking, and it shows you if your volume is clipping. Beneath that, you have the master volume knob. And this, on almost all on any occasions, will be set to the zero position, which is basically you're sending full power out of the main mix into your recorder. And down here, you have the control that determines how loud you will hear stuff in the headphones so you don't blow your minds out. And this is a knob that I think is almost broken on my mixer because Julie and I love very different settings for that. Um, I think anybody coming from radio gets used to hearing stuff with very, very loud volume on headphones, and maybe Matt in the chat room can agree with that, or maybe that's just me. But anyway, this knob right here called phone phones or control room is the one that sets the volume of the headphones. And the cool thing is that both the colors and the names of the buttons are pretty much the same across, across most mixers. We have another knob here called FX Send and some other knobs that aren't very relevant. So now that we understand how a mixer looks like, I'm going to take questions, and then we're going to um, define how, what are we going to plug in where so we can get started and get these guys um, to do some work and, and break some sweat, perhaps. So mm -hmm. Julie, do you have questions in the chat room? No questions. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to have one microphone for Michelle plugged into the mixer, one microphone for Ricardo plugged into the mixer. We're going to have a computer that will be connected. We're going to have a channel coming in from Skype so the mixer can, re can get the voice of whoever they are interviewing, if they are interviewing on that show. We have a cable going to the computer that is going to Skype. So that's going to pull Michelle's microphone and Ricardo's microphone when they interview, so the interviewee can hear them. I hope that makes sense. And we're going to have headphones, obviously, for both Michelle and Ricardo, so they can hear everything that's going on. And last, we're going to have the final mix, which is basically what we are recording, the mix of everything together. Guys, are you following this? Are we good? Yes. OK. So this is the mixer that you guys have, right? Yes. Yes. OK, so here's how it's going to work out. We're going to plug <laughs> Michelle's microphone into here, and we're going to do that step. Actually, guys, you know what? We can do that right now. So I was going to say, can we do Let's I'm do worried. it right now and live. One thing I want to say to everyone watching is that, you know, I'm semi non techy semi techy but I am a little bit, um, shall we say, nervous about doing this. So I'm looking forward to letting other people know that average people can do this because right. we're average. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Right. Yeah. Turn, turn the camera so we can see what you guys are doing. Gotcha. Moran, can you see this? You can see a black screen right now. You, yeah, that's what we have too. Wait, hold on, hold on. Now we can see Ricardo again. Now you got to turn it around. See, that's what I'm saying. Something. Your hand is in front of the camera. Oh, uh, that was PC. <laughs> Are you said non techy there, there you go. Okay, <laughs> so th these guys have unboxed basically everything yeah. to save us time. But um, I will send you, everybody, a link to a list of all the gear that you're seeing on the table right now, including the actual links where Michelle and Ricardo bought this from. So no surprise is going to be here. So Michelle, yeah, let's, the let's plug in the yeah. left microphone. Yep. OK, so can you see the cables? Yep, so plug in one side to the back of the microphone. And guys, this is an ATR microphone like you've been recommended to use. So see what side of the cable it works for the back of that microphone. OK, did you hear it's a click? In. It's, it's in. Perfect. So that's one down. And now plug the other part of the, or the other side of the cable into this input that you're seeing on the screen. If you can see it, it's input labeled microphone one. 
In. It's in. Very okay. nice. Okay, and before we forget, actually, let's plug the mixer to the electricity, right? Does that, that make sense? It does. Before we carry on. Now, if anybody considers, can you show us the plug before you plug it in, Michelle? Sure. Okay, this so this is the plug. It's really big. Okay, so this plug right there, which I don't know if, yeah, we can see it now. So that's the transformer, and it has a plug. Behringer mixers, which is typically, typically what a beginning podcaster will buy because they give great value for the money, have a very, very sensitive electrical plug. So you, once you plug it to the back of the mixer, you want to avoid as much as possible unplugging it. So if you need to move the mixer, you'll want to be uh, unplugging it from the wall socket, not from the mixer. OK, so let's go ahead and plug that. OK, so you can see my hands doing this? Yeah, do it mm -hmm. carefully. Make sure it's aligned. Yep. OK, and then, of course, plug the other side to the wall socket. OK. OK, so let's see the mixer. The light yeah. came on. The light came on. Perfect. So it's not, dead, it's not dead on arrival, which makes me happy. That <laughs> makes me happy, too, since we didn't test anything. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, guys, where the microphone is plugged, can you turn the third knob, which is the preamp, just so it's on the center? So it so says gain. So the, one, the third from the top. Go all the way to the top where the plug is. And that one, just turn the preamp on to 0. So 0 is on the middle there. You have it? Yes. OK, and now turn the volume, which is the white one at the bottom, mm -hmm. the volume of this microphone, also to 0. OK. OK, and if you turn that microphone on, is it on? There's a, there's a, a switch on the microphone itself. It's on, but it, okay. should there be a light or something? No, no, the light only turns on when it's plugged via USB, so that's OK. okay. And okay. last, go back to the mixer mm -hmm. and turn the main volume, which is the rightmost fader, turn that to 0 as well. Wait. The, the gray Good. fader. No, no, the gray one. All the way to the right, and that to 0. There you go. OK, and now if you try and talk, you should see the lights blink in the mixer. Testing, testing. There yep. it is. There it oh, is. There you cool. go. OK. So we have the first microphone connected. So now let's repeat that, and that will be pretty easy, and plug the second microphone. OK. Oh. So. Everybody in the chat, I don't know if you asked that or not, but the cable that they use to plug in the microphone to the mixer actually comes with the ATR microphone when you buy it. They are using different stands than those that come with the microphone, but this the one, cables themselves came. Uh, go ahead, Michelle. This is the one that came with the mic. Yeah. This, this tripod stand. And they are using an on-stage stand that basically is just more robust and just sits nicer. It has an ability to be um, taller if you want to. It's just a little bit um, more professional. And that stand, while you guys are plugging, I will say that that, uh, that stand, where it is on-stage BS7200, costs $13. That's the cost of each stand. So now we have the second microphone in. And again, Michelle is turning the preamp on. Turn also the, the white volume part on as well. And we will talk at the end of this call about how to perfectly set the preamp. But just now we want to see it works. So now if you talk into the second microphone, you should Testing. see the lights. Testing. Is the second Testing. microphone on? Switch it on. Yeah, the cord is really delicate on the back of this amp. OK. okay so be careful with that. Make sure the microphone is on, and let's see if it works. Testing, testing. Nope. OK. Um, is the microphone switched on? Are you positive about that? I am. I'm positive. I turned it off and on again. Nope. OK. Um, so the preamp knob on microphone number two, is that set to 0? Yes. OK. And the volume at the bottom is set to 0 as well? Yes. OK. 
And when you are talking, it's not working. No. Let me confirm that this one, one is. This one is. Yeah, this one is for sure. Maybe I should set up, put it into okay. three. Should I try three? Uh, you can try three, yeah. Or maybe the microphone actually arrived broken, which would be very sad. It would be. Testing. There it is. OK, it's on. I just tightened everything. We're all set. Oh, so it just wasn't plugged correctly. Yeah. Whew, don't get I didn't, these hard I didn't attacks. Yeah. Right. So tell us about these red cushions you had us get, too, Moran. Right. So these just simply go on the microphone. You chose a dead sexy color. Of course. <laughs> OK. These should just be fitted on the microphone. And you can probably hear that Chloe here is getting very excited by this stage. OK. OK. So let's, let's move on. Next step is plugging in the computer. Now, for that, we're going to need a few things. So first thing, I want you to find the iMic, which is a white um, circular. There it is. That's going to be uh, used to allow us to plug more stuff into and out to of the computer than what it usually supports. And you plug that into the USB port of the computer. Okay. For everybody on the chat, the iMic is made by Griffin Technology, and it costs $24. With that plugged in, we can move on. And now I want you to find one of the Hosa Technology cables that you have. Is it this? Yep, perfect. So this cable basically on one, hand, on one side plugs into a computer kind of port, and on the other one plugs in to a mixer kind of port. So the small, mm -hmm. the small size, the normal side, should go into the out okay. port of the iMic. Boom, mm -hmm. there you go. And those two beautiful um, parts should go into, if you can see my screen now, should go into line in number uh, five or six. One goes into five, and one goes into six. You will find that if, OK, um, we are. Does it, does it matter? Uh, traditionally, red will be bottom, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> of course, it's the opposite of the way I did it, right? Traditionally. You are challenging the status quo. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I wanted to make this as real as possible. If I could okay, do this, so anyone could do this. Now we have the out port, which is going to bring the sound from Skype going into the mixer. And we can't test it because you guys are not on Skype, but we will trust that it works. Jewel, do we have questions in the chat so far? No. Um, oh. Oh. OK, uh, Amy asks, um, what does that do? And I'm not trying to understand. I'm not trying in good timing to know exactly what are we referring to. If you're asking about the white iMic, it allows you to basically plug into the computer both an input and an output connection, which is what Michelle is showing us now. If you're asking about the cable that went into the mixer, it allows us basically to take the sound coming from the computer, from Skype, from your interviewee, and add it into the mix so the final recording has everybody together. Otherwise, we're just recording ourselves. So I hope that makes sense. The, and this cable by Hosa Technology costs $4, or $3.95, if I am 100% um, accurate. And it's called a Y cable because it has, on one side, it has one plug, and on the other one, it has two. So it forms the shape of Y. The next thing we need to do is plug the part going to Skype into the mixer as well. So for that, please pick up the second Hosa cable. And even though that's a Y cable, you don't need both sides. So pl plug in just a black one into the part that says FX send, and it should be right above where you plugged the previous plug. Okay. 
She did the red and not the black again. If you can change them, that would uh, be... Uh, okay, now as I said here, we're only using one of the plugs, not both of them. That is okay. And the second side of this cable goes also to the iMic, and it goes to the line in, or just in, as it's called there. And one last step. On the side of the iMic, do you see there's a knob saying microphone or line? On the, on the right hand of the iMic, there's a knob on the side. Can you see it on the screen? On the can you side. see it? Yeah. We can see it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Turn that into line mode, because it's coming from a mixer, not directly from a microphone. So that's called a line. OK, so right now, what we have so far is Michelle's microphone is plugged, Ricardo's microphone is plugged, the sound coming from Skype and to Skype are all plugged, so the computer can hear what's happening in the mixer. Now I'm going to move on to plug in your headphones so you guys can hear what's going on. And for that, since we have two hosts, and Julie is telling me we have questions. So yeah. before we do that. Yeah, John is asking. I'm assuming since the mixer puts everything into one track, that if you realize, say, your Skype gets shouted, you can't tone that down. Or if there's noise, you can't fix it. Is it true? Uh, Jonah, that is 100% true generally. What you can do, and this is how I record, by the way. Remember we had a panning button that determined what goes to which channel? You can turn your microphone, and so Michelle can turn her and Ricardo's, for instance, all the way to the left and turn, guys, you don't need to do that. It's just answering questions. Okay. And you could turn the voice from your interviewee all the way to the right, and then you'll end up the same way you would with an eCam recording. So one channel has only you, and the other channel has only the interviewee. I hope that answers the question. Let me know if you have uh, any more questions about that. So guys, as I said, Michelle and Ricardo are two people, obviously. We all noticed that by now. <laughs> and because of that, and most mixers you use only have one headphone output, which is a bummer. And you will generally see people recommend to buy a headphones hub or a headphones multiplier. There's all kinds of names. Bottom line, they all cost like $300 just in order to be able to plug three or four headphones, which is not what we wanted to do. So instead, sure. what Michelle and Ricardo got is something called, and let's see if you can find it, the Monster Eye Splitter. And this little thing allows you to split to two headphones, and each side of this has a red um, little lever, and that lever actually sets the volume of that headphone. So Ricardo can be listening in one volume, and Michelle can have a different volume on hers. Wow. And instead of spending 200 or $300, they spent wow. 18 So wow. as Michelle is doing, you plug one set of headphones to one side, the other one to the other one. The only problem with the Monster uh, Splitter, as I said, it's Monster Power Eye Splitter 1000. This is what it's called is that it has a small plug. So it, it doesn't fit the mixer, right? And for this, we need an adapter. So please locate the Sennheiser connector. There it is. And this is basically just adapting between the small one and the big plug that the mixer has. So plug it all the way in, and then put this in the phone's input. You can see that on my screen as well in a second. It is. It's just next to the FX send on the Behringer. You have it? Yes, sir. Perfect. So now we have headphones. Let's move on to the next step which is the final mix. So did you guys receive a USB cable with the mixer? This one came with the mixer, yes. OK, so that USB cable is going to go on one hand, on one side, to the USB output at the back of the mixer. Back of the mixer, OK. Mm -hmm. There it is. 
Good. And on the other side, of course, it's going to go into the computer. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. And basically, we are all set. Wow. There's only one thing. So this wasn't too hard. Before I say it, there's only one thing. Was it hard? No. No. It wasn't. really wasn't. Not at all. It wasn't. And the cool thing, as I said, it's step by step, and almost all mixers have pretty much the same structure. Now, Julia, are we getting questions on the chat? No questions. So either people are intensely into this or uh, have lost us completely. If you could say in the <laughs> chat which is which, we'd appreciate that. They're insane to it, and they're talking about headphone splitters for the car for the kids. OK, talking about headphone splitters for the car for the kids. That's awesome. By the way, guys, um, just to give you a heads up, all the setup you just saw here for two hosts in the same room with the splitters and the cables and everything was $297, all in all. <laughs> guys, how much were you paying? Can you share how much you were paying to rent the studio for an hour a week? Absolutely. Close to that amount. We were paying a month. 249 per month. Per month. So within a month and a week, you already paid back the investment. That's correct. Yeah. As I was mentioning, and Jonah, I am trusting you to pick up on the problem with what we just did. There's one problem when it comes to Skype and Skype playing nicely with, um, with podcasting. And here's the thing. This is the c connection we have, right? We have the computer sending the interviewee to the mixer. We have the mixer sending Michelle and Ricardo to Skype, and we also have the mixer sending the mix of everybody together to, to the recorder, right? So far, all true. But if we don't make a special configuration, the mixer is going to send all the mix to Skype, which means that if Michelle is interviewing me, so we have Michelle talking, we have Ricardo talking, and we have me talking, all of that goes into the mix, which is sent to the recorder, but also to Skype. So I hear myself. And not only I can hear myself on Skype, I can hear myself in delay, because it takes time for my voice to get all the way to Michelle's apartment to be routed through the mixer and be sent back all the way to me. So we have a problem here. In essence, we need a different channel going from the mixer to Skype. And that channel is called is often called mix minus because it's the entire mix minus the original voice coming from Skype. So it would be Ricardo and Michelle minus my own voice. This is the sound they are going to send back to Skype. So I don't hear myself. I'm going to pause here a second because this is a bit. I know it can be a bit confusing. So uh, Michelle and Ricardo, do you, I want to know if you understand what am I saying, and I want to know if people in the chat room get the problem. Yeah, we definitely understand. understand. It makes absolute sense. Mm -hmm. So you don't have playback, and hearing yourself in your own ears can be very disconcerting. It makes sense. Yeah. Especially, so here's the cool thing. Like, when you're going to talk, you're going to, just like in the radio, you're going to hear yourselves, but in real time. But when right. I'm being interviewed by you and my voice goes into your mixer and back to me, I'm going to hear myself in delay or in echo, as some people call it. And that is indeed very confusing for most people. People just cannot talk when that happens. They, 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 they just get all buffled. Um, now, I know there's a huge lag today from the chat room. So um, Julie um, will raise a flag if people have any questions about this. And uh, Amy is asking, is there a list of all the components to purchase? Yes, we're going to make the actual list of everything Michelle and Ricardo bought. Uh, we're going to make that avail available with the original links and everything right after this show. So if everybody is on board with the problem, let's see how do we create a mix minus? How do we mix all the sound minus Skype and send that to our computer, or to Michelle's computer? So as you might recall from a few seconds ago or a few minutes ago, every microphone and every input on the mixer has this button called FX. And I promised you I'm going to come back to it. Now, in some mixers, it will be, will be called AUX, auxiliary. 
In Behringer, it's called fx. Either way, we are going to use this thing called fx to create our mix minus setup, our, connection, our, our compilation of all the volumes we want to be going to Skype besides Skype itself. And this is so easy to do. So right now, Michelle, if you can show us the FX setting of microphone number one as the mi mixer came out of the box, what is it set to? That right here is set down here. Is all the way to zero, right? Yeah. Now, yes. what this volume does, you, we have the white volume controller. That controls what, how loud is this microphone on the main mix, on the on what's getting recorded. But the red knob called FX, if, we could, uh, if you could tilt by 90 degrees, um, Ricardo, so we can actually see this, because um, I'm getting a terrible neck tilt from looking at it. Oh, 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 oh. OK, perfect. This knob basically says, how much volume from this microphone do we want to send to this separate channel. And this is the channel we're going to use to Skype. So we want all of Michelle's volume to go to the mix minus, to the mix that is with everything minus Skype. So set this knob, the red knob, to zero for microphone number one. Okay. And we're going to do exactly the same for Ricardo on microphone number two. Okay. Now, microphone number three, nothing is connected there. So we definitely don't need it to be sent to Skype. So that stays on zero. And so does microphone number four. Now, if we move a bit to the right or to the left, depending on how you, how you look at it, locate where it has um, line in uh, or where it says five, six, just where your finger is. Perfect. This right there, where it says five, six, is the input coming from Skype. And you can see the cable just on top of there coming from Skype. Now, you guys tell me, do we want this to go into the mix minus, or is this what we want to minus out? This is what we want to minus out, right? Exactly. So we are going to leave this on 0 as well. OK? Mm -hmm. So this stays at 0. There's another knob which you pointed at called FX Send near the phantom button on the right side. This needs to stay on. Uh, on the off switch as well. Because what this button does is determines how much of what's going on in that channel is reapplied to our mix. But we don't need it reapplied. It's already there. We don't need to make any changes, right? So that stays off. So to summarize, we have microphone one with FX set to their zero position, to their on position. We have microphone two set with FX to the zero position. And if your mixer would call it AUX, then you would call it AUX. It's still the same setting. And most important, we have the input coming from Skype set to off. And once we have that, this problem is fixed. Because the computer is getting, and show us the cable going to the computer, because now this will make sense. The cable going to the computer is called FX send, right? That's what it says right there on the top, where the cable is. So on the mixer itself, it says FX send, which basically means this is sending everything we turned the FX knob on for. It's sending only that to the computer. So now we have a cable sending only Ricardo and Michelle to the computer without the Skype. And to be honest, we're done. That's a podcast studio setup. That's awesome. Wow. That's really exciting. Yes. Now, I'm going to help you uh, fine tune the knobs in just a second, but I just want to know if people have questions in the chat room. And I see Robert Thompson is with us today, which excites me dearly because I think it's the first time Robert manages to make it um, to our weekly hangout. So guy, uh, guys, say hi to Robert for me. In fact, I'm going to write that in the chat as well. Hi, Robert. Hi, Robert. OK, uh, anybody has questions about this setup before we do some fine tuning?
doesn't seem so. So here's the last thing you guys need to do, and you will probably want to do that after this call, right? Remember, we just turned all the knobs on, basically. That's what we did. We turned on the amplifier and we turned on the volume for everything, right? Yeah. The one thing you need to do is fine-tune the amplifier for each microphone. And this is really easy to do. All you have to do is turn all the white knobs off besides the microphone you want to be fine-tuning. So let's leave only microphone number one on and turn all the white knobs besides microphone number one off. OK. Now you turn the main mix to zero as it is already on the right side, that mm -hmm. gray fader, that's on zero. And you turn the white fader of the microphone you're testing, you're tuning, to zero as well. And now what you would do is sit in front of the microphone and start talking at your conversation voice and look at the green bars on the right. And you want to be amping up the gain, which is the black knob just under the cable on the top, the gain of the amplifier. You want to be amping it either up or down, just like you're doing Audacity before you start recording. You want to be talking and seeing your volume levels, and you're going to be playing with the amplifier until you're on good level. Now, uh, this mixer doesn't have many lamps on it, so I usually, tall, I usually tune it. If you look at the lamps, we have minus 20, 0, 6, and clip, right? Right. Right. OK, so clip. if the clip light is on, your sound is distorted. That's a very bad sign. If the 6, the yellow 6, is on, also that's a bad sign. You want to be between the 20 button. You want the 20 button to always be on when you talk. And only when you raise, like I just did your voice, you want the zero button, to t the zero uh, light to turn on. So you're basically just going to be talking and tuning until you get kind of into that area. And then you're just going to leave the preamp as it is, and you're perfectly set. Then while you're talking, if you want to turn yourself on or off, you will do that with a white knob. So the preamp stays, there's going to be Michelle setting on microphone one and Ricardo setting on microphone two for the preamp mm -hmm. knob. You do that once, and then when you record, you change only the white knobs. So now that it's all set and you'll do this part with a preamp, when you come to record a show, all you have to do is basically turn the white knob of microphone 1 to 0, turn the white knob of microphone 2 to 0. If you're doing a Skype interview, turn the white knob of line 5, which is the Skype line, uh, not this one, the one above, the white knob above. Yeah, it's tricky because it goes like one, two, three, four, and then five Seven, is at the top. Eight, right. Yeah. And in fact, um, I think that is something. So the numbers change between mixers. So I'm looking on mine, for instance, five is on the bottom. On yours, I think five is on the top. It doesn't really matter as long as you know which, which uh, input it's plugged into. With these all on, all you have to do is just open up Audacity, select the mixer as sound source, and it will record everything, both Skype and your voice and everything into one file. Now, if you have a digital recorder like Bill has, Bill, you could plug your digital recorder either to the main out or preferably to the, um, let's see exactly how it's called in here. Preferably, you'll co connect that to, let me give you the exact name, to the two track out, which is the red and white uh, banana plugs, we call them in Israel. <laughs> Um, on the right side, on the middle, can you point that, uh, Michelle? The rightmost, these two. Uh, yeah, so run row about. The white and red in the middle row, these two, perfect. This is where you would plug an H2 or H4 or um, any sound, a Roland R9, Edirol R05, whatever they are called, whichever you pick. If you have a digital recorder, you would plug that into those ports. If you don't, as I said, this mixer has a USB out. You can just record in Audacity. And then you don't need Ecamm, and you don't need Pamela, and you don't need anything, because the mixer already brings all the sound together, and all you need to do is just record the output. And you will get great sound because the mixer is doing the heavy weight. The mixer is doing the amplifying. The mixer is doing the digitali digitalization, which is 
converting real world sound into my into computer bits. The mixer does all, all that for you instead of the microphone and your computer, which means you will get a lot higher quality. And that's all there is to setting up a great podcasting studio. Now I mentioned that the cost of this, and guys, I, I just want to give you a, a, a clap because mm -hmm. you did this with no previous. We did not rehearse it. This. We you have no previous training with radio, and you set it up in under an hour. Thank you. Yes. We're happy to be here as Ricardo covers the camera. Yes. Thank you, Moran. Thank you. <laughs> and we so I'm just. I'm just going to go through quickly the prices of stuff, just so we can understand how much would this cost if you are doing just a single host setup. In that case, I will take the smaller mixer, which would cost about seventy dollars. Uh, instead of $100, you only need one microphone. And to be honest, most of you guys already have the microphone. Headphones, I'm pretty sure you already have. You don't need a headphone splitter because, once again, you only have one, um, one headphone to use, right? Um, and my Excel sheet is stuck, so I can't tell you the price so far. But so far, we have a mixer at $70, and that's it. Uh, you will need. Uh, one Sennheiser converter to convert the plug of the mixer to a plug of normal headphones. So that will be another $3.2. And I'm making the, the math as I go. And by that, I mean my computer is doing the math as I go. You need the two cables to plug the computer in, in and out, like the Skype. That's $7.90. You will need the iMic USB interface. Um, that if you, uh, that's the white round one, and that would cost uh, $23.78. And you might or might not want a, a microphone stand, a decent microphone stand, that's $13. The windscreen is between $1 to $2. So all in all, if you would do this setup for one host, it's $120, everything you just saw. And I hope this answers the questions of uh, some people in the chat on how much it would cost to do that. Guys, um, Michelle, Ricardo, do you have any questions? Um, people in the chat room, any questions? Now would be the perfect time. No, I don't have any questions. No, we're, we're excited. We're ready, ready to go. Yeah, we're, ready. we're ready. And we're saving a lot of money. Yeah, hey, guys, so now that you're on here on stage, could you tell us what's the launch date so we can hold you accountable? <laughs> yes, it will be Monday, October second. October. No, 7th. that's not right. October sixth. It's it's two Mondays from t this week. Monday, so. October sixth. We're going to create an event in the PI family so we can all yeah. cheer you up and hold you accountable. And to that tune, uh, I want to send warm and excited congratulations to Amy Robles, which yeah. I finally call correctly, because I used to call her Robles for like months. Mm -hmm. So Amy Robles, uh, congratulations on your launch. I think Rachel isn't with us, but she also just submitted to iTunes yesterday. So very exciting and great job, everybody. Um, if there are no questions in the chat room, I think we'll wrap this up for this setting, for this. Um, and, and again, Michelle, Ricardo, thank you so much for for doing this with us. We will have the replay available both for your amazing audience and, of course, for PI. And as you can see, I even got a haircut to celebrate this with you. And, well, Moran, uh, can you say one quick thing? Of course. Absolutely. We just want to thank you because, yeah, thank you know, you. we've been with you almost a year now or a little over a year, I think. And, you know, our, our podcast, Incubator Family, is amazing and supportive. And for us, we feel like we're sort of like the prince of podcasting now, how Prince got rid of all of his record deals and, and was, you know, the king of his own destiny right. because of the support of you and Inspiring Innovation and the um, Podcast Incubator family, we now are in charge of our destiny as well. And we Hell yeah. Thank you. Hell I'm yeah. excited about that. 